Hi, good morning, Catalyst family. You know, for those of you watching at home, hi. Um, I'm so sorry Pastor Sam couldn't make it today. He's feeling under the weather, but uh, Sam, if you're watching, we love you very much and uh, can't wait for you to join us again. So today I'm going to share about community and the importance of it and what the Bible says about it. So let me open up in a word of prayer. Um, dear Jesus, thank you so much for our community here at Catalyst. We all need each other. Sometimes we're up, sometimes we're down, sometimes we're in the hills, and sometimes we're in the valley. But no matter where we are, we need you, Lord, and we need one another. So, Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit will just um, speak through me, through your Bible verses and stories. Just stir in our hearts. Just the importance, Lord, of needing one another and how you created people to encourage one another and lift each other up. Um, because all of us are all over the place. But Lord, we love you, we trust you, and uh, we just praise you. And we pray all these things, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so one fish that gets community is the gold saddle goatfish of the reefs of Hawaii. I have a picture of one, and um, these fish know the terminology stronger together. When they're in the ocean and they feel threatened by other predators, they gather together in a school to appear larger than they are to scare off the enemy. They provide a good example for us to huddle up, join together, stick together, because oncoming storms will approach. You know, when God addressed people in the Bible, he spoke a lot to groups. The Israelites, the nations, the generations, God's people, tribes, clans. He did not just speak to the individual. During the global, global pandemic, it was rough. We had to stay six feet apart. We had to wear our mask. We couldn't gather in large groups. We couldn't gather at church. It was hard on the soul because we are created and called to be in relationship. You know, God even models this for us. In Genesis 1, 26, this is what he says. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. The us and the are in this Bible verse has to do with the Trinity, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. They, worked cru they are crucially intertwined, and they work together for God's purposes and plans. If God has to work with others to honor others, love others, and serve others, how much more are we supposed to work with one another to do things for his kingdom? It shouldn't surprise us that all of us are drawn to community because God is community. The perfect place to think about this is in high school. When you're a freshman and you're going to a big ocean instead of a pond at a middle school, the first thing you wonder when you walk on campus is, who is going to be my little tribe? So eventually, people find their places, like the athletes will hang out, the cheerleaders will hang out, the student body will hang out, the people on the drama team, the debate team, even those people that say, I don't want to be in a group, they end up finding each other. We all need to belong and feel seen and known. So this morning, I'm going to share three ways we can find community here at Catalyst. And the first way is this, by attending church. You know, church is important because it's God's idea. He created it. You know, the Bible mentions church as the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, God's building, and God's household. In Matthew 16, 18, he says this, And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. You know, an article that I read in Christianity.com Christianity a month before the pandemic hit said this. It said um, Christians in general 
are only coming to church once a month compared to previous times when everybody came every week. You know, and it, it said the reasons why was because extracurricular activities get in the way. But you know, in the book of Hebrews, the writer reminds us, hey, it's important that we gather together. Hebrews 10, 24 to 25 says this, and let us consider how we may, wait, we may spur one another towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. And all the more, as you see the day approaching. You know, sometimes we could come to church and have a consumer mentality. Like, what do I get out of it? Are they playing my favorite song? Is the message really speaking to me? But this Bible verse encourages us, hey, we have a part two. Let's spur one another on. Spur means to inspire. It means to motivate. It means to provoke in a good way, like iron sharpens iron. You know, sometimes when we think of church, we think church is what you see up front, like our pastor speaking or the worship team. But we are all the church. We are the body of Christ. You know, 1 Corinthians 12, 12 talks about how each of us are the body of the Christ, and we each carry a certain gifting and a certain part. Not one person has it all. You know, sometimes we judge each other. I do. I confess that. And you think, well, this person lacks this. But you know what? Maybe they're not gifted in it. The only person that has every trait you could possibly want is God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. God has gifted us with just one part. So since we are all the body of Christ, like all of you guys sitting in the audience, you play a part. When I come on a Sunday morning, and I'm just like walking through, you know, and then you have small little exchange conversations with people, I get really blessed. Like, for example, one week, I, I, one weekend, I bumped into like Nancy Aizawa. Nancy really carries the mother's heart. She's always wanting to pray for you and shower you with love. And then when I go to the nursery, because now I love watching my grandson Hudson, I bump into Jerry Benuya. You know, Jerry is just energetic bunny. When I see him, he's so full of love, even in that short exchange where we say hi to each other. And he reminds me like, hey, Dale, work hard for Christ. And then when I come on a Sunday morning, I, I quickly walk by Christine Oyakawa. Now, if you guys know Christine, she's, she's more on the quiet side, but she is so sweet. She always makes a point to say hi to me. She always makes a point, if she doesn't see me, to text me that she thought of me. So each of us are an image of Jesus Christ. We have a light to shine and to show each other. So maybe today you're meant to be at church to be a blessing to somebody and show them God's love. The rest of Hebrews talks about encouraging one another all the more because the day will be approaching. The day is a capital D, and that means when Christ is returning. So every day when we wake up, we are one day closer to his return. And you know, as Christ gets closer to his return, there's going to be more spiritual darkness, more persecution, and more anti-Christian pressure from the world. So we are going to need each other. So the second way we can find community besides coming on a Sunday morning is by joining a small group. You know, there's blessings and benefits of sharing our lives with each other. In the Bible, there's over 100 commands that talk about one another, like humble yourselves in front of one another, serve one another, forgive one another. What do we need to do all these commands? We need one another. Times like the pandemic has really shown us that we need a group of people to be in our back corner. Genesis 2.18 says this, The Lord said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. You know, this passage is used a lot when people get married. But you know what? Not everybody is called to marriage. 
and that's, that's fine. This verse is for everybody. We need each other. You know, there's a study on mental health that revealed that those people that choose to isolate themselves and not have close friendships, like being in a small group, the following things could happen. You're three times more likely to die an early death. You're four times more likely to suffer emotional burnout. You're five times more likely to be clinically depressed. And you're 10 times more likely to be hospitalized for emotional or mental disorder. God never intended us to live the Christian life alone. The number one thing God wants for our lives is to love God and love other people. You can do this in a small group. Yeah, when you join a small group, it doesn't mean everybody gets along too. Like sometimes different personalities rub each other the wrong way. But did you know you need those people? They challenge our self-centered ways. And they teach us to be generous and to think about other people. You know, it's in small groups that people get close enough to know each other. They get close enough to care and share to get close enough to challenge and support, to confide and confess, to laugh and weep, and to forgive and be forgiven. In small groups, compared to a Sunday morning, right, people are accountable to people. They're watching over our souls. So uh, personal growth, right, it does not happen in isolation. Nothing good happens in isolation. But small groups are God's gift to us to challenge us to grow in character and spiritual growth. So right now I'm going to show a slideshow from our past small group year. Uh, we showed it to our small group leaders as a thank you. And then after that, we're going to be treated with Susan Miyake, and she's going to come up and share how her community, how it, what it's meant to her. So Hope you enjoy the slideshow. And the slideshow is done by Brandon Hojo. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit. church we need your power in us we seek your kingdom first we hunger and we thirst we refuse to waste our lives for your our joy and prize to see the captive hearts release the hurt the sick the poor Good morning. Um, my name is Susan, as Dale just shared. And just some things that 
um, I think about when I think about small groups. Um, one of the first things I think how the small group has blessed me is is what Dale was sharing too is like coming together. Um, I think during the pandemic, I had an opportunity to be part of Daniel and Linda's small group, but also to the women's small group that was led by Dale throughout the last couple of years. And I think that um, coming together was really important because it was, you know, during the pandemic, it was really hard. Um, and there was just so many different changes, so many different unknowns that are still kind of happening now. But I think just being able to be a part of a group and coming together, even though it was hard because we, you know, through technology, it's been great because we can go through Zoom. But I, I'll be honest with you that we're, some of us are a little more technical, technology challenged. So it was kind of an interesting little ride there, trying to get on and trying to be in a breakout group and trying to do the things that we needed to do without getting cut off and things like that. But I think that that was really important and vital during that time. Um, and I look forward to the time when we can be more in person like we are now or starting to because I, for me, in person has been, uh, it's a lot easier or it's a lot more effective for me in regards to small groups. But I think for the time that God has really blessed us with technology and even though it's really hard for some of us, I think it's really important to try to do that too. And I think another thing too that um, was really important during that time or during small groups is just a commitment um, or a choice. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you, sometimes it's hard. I don't know where you guys are sometimes, but it's hard to, to come every week or to get on to Zoom or to get on to a small group. And sometimes it's easy to be tired and not want to come because of work. And it's easy to kind of have those excuses of, of not being committed to a group. But I think that I've seen it through the leaders as well as had to make my own choices of being there every week or every time it's done. And just the commitment that like Daniel and Linda have had as well as all the small group leaders here to press on and to keep having that openness to do that. And I know that I just really appreciate that part of that. And it's something that I know that I need to continue to make a choice to come and to be part of the Bible study. And, and I think, too, another thing is, is the care, the care that Bible study gives to us. Um, I don't know if you're like me, too. Sometimes it's hard. It's hard to be open. It's hard to share struggles. And it's hard to, to receive sometimes the prayer or the encouragement that people can give. Um, but I know that during the time of the pandemic, and even now, there's a lot of, for me, there's a lot of struggles at work because I've been in person for quite a while now. And, and so there's just a lot of changes and policies and mandates and stuff that we have to apply to all the time. And I know that sometimes the people, because we're all from different walks of life, you know, you know, married, not married, kids, no kids, different places, that I know that they probably don't even really understand what I'm saying because, you know, it's not where they physically are working. But I know that our small group, they really listen. And I, I remember a time when there was, I had a real uh, struggle with a coworker who wasn't really, uh, who wasn't talking to me and it was just really hard. And I remember kind of talking and kind of going on and on through Zoom about how frustrating it was and how it was really hurtful and didn't really know what was going on. Um, but they graciously listened to me and it was really kind of amazing because during that time when I was kind of going on and on during the Zoom thing, I got a text from my coworker apologizing for just kind of some of the things. I thought, wow, God is so good. I wasn't even like done saying anything <laughs> and he had already taken care of it. So, but, but it was good because the, the small group graciously just kind of listened. So for me, just small groups is really important. So I don't, I don't know where you guys are or if you have belonged to small groups or if you're thinking about it or if you were part of one and you don't want to be part of one. It's, I think it's really the whole thing of unity and the whole thing of coming together and really being committed to each other as well as really caring for each other. I think it's, we really need it now. I think small groups and that unity is very, very important. So I encourage you guys to, to join a small group and just really uh, reap the benefits that God has given to us. Thanks. Thank you, Susan, so much. You know, I always appreciate Susan. She's always loving and kind and and honest, and uh, I, th I thought what you shared was really rich. Thanks so much.
So um, yeah, the two ways we can have community at Catalyst is by coming Sunday morning, if, right, if we're, he if we're healthy. <laughs> and then the second way is by joining a small group. So the last way I was gonna share how we offer community here at Catalyst is um, by joining a tea huddle. Now, some of you have heard about this. If you're in a small group, some of you might not have, so I'm gonna explain this to you. But I wanted to give a shout out to Sakata Reese for designing this. <laughs> so, tea huddle basically is discipleship. It's where you meet with two or three people, and you, if you're not in a small group, you can meet on a weekly basis. If you are in a small group, you can meet on your off weeks. Our small groups at Catalyst meet twice a month. So I'm actually in two tea huddles. I have my small group, and then I meet with two other groups on the off weeks, and I love it. So it really does um, transform your life. So this comes from Pastor Neil Cole's book, Search and Rescue, and he just talks about his heart for evangelism and reaching people for Christ. So before I show you the brochure, and we kind of go over it, um, I wanted to show you where it comes from. So in Ecclesiastic 4, verse 9 through 12, King Solomon is sharing his heart and life about mistakes he's made in his life, right? He was wise, he was super rich, he went through everything. But right here in Ecclesiastic 4, he talks about the importance of being in relationship and with meeting people in two or three. So this is what he says, Ecclesiastic 4, 9 to 12. Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. So he talks about being in relationship, being with at least two or three, and the importance of it, because you have each other's back. If you're alone, you could easily get attacked. And that's what the enemy does all day long. So if you get your tea huddle brochure, if you look on the back, and yeah, Damon might put it up there too. But if you look on the back, it comprises of three things, okay? Sharing, reading, and praying. On the sharing time, we'll look, there's, there's character accountability questions that you go over every single time you meet. You don't have to guess what you're gonna share, it's just written for you, okay? And then there's a reading portion. The reading portion is really important because you're choosing you're picking up the Bible, right? The Hebrew says the Bible is living and active. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It understands the intentions and the attitudes of your heart. So the Bible reading is so important. So when you get in your tea huddle, you just say which book of the Bible you're going to read, and you read a chapter every day. Like I'm in two of them. One of my tea huddles, we just finished the book of Psalms. Every day we read one book, and then when we meet in our tea huddle, every other week, we go over what touched us from scripture. And the third thing that you do in a tea huddle is you pray. And I love this part. You get to pray for each other's needs, which is great, but this is the part I love. You get to pray for people that don't know Christ, your loved ones, your friends, your family members. And then you get to pray for them to maybe join a tea huddle with you. So if you look on the inside of your tea huddle brochure, it's going to have the tea huddle questions. It says on the top why it works, but you could just read that on your own, okay? So I'm going to go through the questions with you. There's seven things to do. Number one, it says this. So if I meet with somebody, like say I'm meeting with TA, and we meet in our tea huddle, I'll just open up in prayer, and then we'll flip these things out. And you guys, this is also on our Catalyst app. If you go to the Catalyst app, and on the bottom, you hit more, and it says dot, dot, dot. You click on that, it'll take you to the tea huddles. This brochure is there for you. And also frequently ask questions. Everything you wanna know, like a dictionary of how a tea huddle works. But if I'm meeting with Chie, um, yeah, 
Sorry, you guys totally lost where I was at. Okay, <laughs> so number one says this. In what way, and I'm going to sum it up, you guys. It's number one basically says this. How have you been like Christ this week? Inside your circle, family, friends, and church, and outside your circle, like somebody at the grocery store. Maybe you wanted to give a meal to somebody that was homeless. So number one, since we all, when we become Christians, we accept Jesus Christ in our heart. He's in us. So we're going to reflect his, his image. So number one, we're just sharing how we are like Christ. Okay. Number two says, how have you noticed or experienced God in your life this week? Were there any answered prayers? I love number two because it's asking us, how have we seen God in our life this week? It says, are there any answered prayers? God answers our prayers all the time. Sometimes he doesn't answer it the way we want it, but he is answering us. So that's number two. Number three, what struggles, regrets, or things do you need to confess this week? I love number three, too. Now, it's so easy for us to share our struggles, right? Our church is really open. Anybody asks you how you're doing, you know, we're pretty transparent. So that's good. But I love how it adds what regrets or confession that you have. So in my past tea huddle, we had one, I had one this past Monday. I'm with two other girls, and we each got to the confession part. And I loved it. We were each confess, confessing where we sinned during the week. Like, I think mine was flush. You know, like, we had COVID, some of us, during the family, during Christmas and the holidays. And I was so mean to Barry. You know, you're not feeling good. You're fatigued. When you're tired, sometimes you take it out the most on your spouse. So I confess to them. I said, I'm so sorry. And I confessed to him later, too. <laughs> but I said, I have been so mean. I have been so of the flesh, so short, like when he asked me something. And then I told those girls that he's the most loving husband, even though I'm mean and rude and just blah. He just accepts me. I mean, he'll reprimand me. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I don't listen, but... You know, I, I, but that was my confession. I said I mean to him. And so, um, yeah, then we were all sharing and uh, laughing at the same time, saying, ah, oh, we're just of the flesh. <laughs> but we want to be of the spirit, so line up. <laughs> so I love number three. And then number four says, um, what promptings have you felt or heard from God this week? How have you responded? So this is basically just, how, what did God whisper to you this week? You know, maybe you're reading his word, and then he, a verse really like lightning struck and really touched you. Or maybe you're walking at the park and you're exercising, and then you see the beautiful skies, and you're like, man, there's God. God whispers to us every single day. So this one on the prompting, how did you hear him? How did you see him? And then number five says, what passage did you read? So um, in this one tea huddle that I'm in that we did this past Monday, we are in the book of Matthew. And so when it was my turn to share, um, I shared with them what touched me, and it was this. It was Matthew 15, 30, and it's talking about Jesus. It says, great crowds came to him, which is Jesus, bringing the lame, the blind, the crippled, the mute, and many others, and laid them at his feet, and he healed them. So I told the girls that what really struck me in this verse was that people were bringing hurt people and they were laying them at Jesus' feet. And I told them that that really touched me because I'm in a season where loved ones are having major health issues. And I feel so helpless because I can't help them. But the Lord, when I read this verse, he said, Dale, you can't. Just Pick them up in prayer, bring them to me, tell me what you want, you know, in love to do for them, and lay them down at his feet. So I told my girls in my tea huddle that um, that verse really spoke to me, like whenever I feel burdened, you know, you guys, we're all in storms, right? You always hear the saying, you are either um, not in a storm, but about to go in one, 
you're in one, or you're getting a little breather and you're getting out of one, but you're going to go back in one. So this verse just really ministered to me because it was like, okay, Dale, whatever you're carrying, which might feel heavy, lay it at his feet. You can't carry it by just worrying and wishing you could help more and striving and no, I just have to lay it at his feet. So what I do is I walk every morning, right? I wake up at 6, I'm at the park by 6.20, and I just lay people at his feet. I say, Jesus, please help them. Let them get to know you. Speak to them through this trial. And I just lay them at his feet. And then when I go home, I try not to carry it. I try not to carry the heavy burden. But when I did my tea huddle this week, that Bible passage really touched me. You know, it's so important to be in his word. His word is a rock. It's foundation. It's his promise. It's his security. So I go to the rock, which is God and his word, every single time. And then number six says additional question you would like to be asked. So when you do a tea huddle with your friend, um, say, for example, I'm like a workaholic. Okay, say I have a job and it's just all encompassing and it's really getting to me. So maybe every week they can ask me, hey, Dale, how's your job going? Right? Just keeping me accountable that way. So for each of you, that question will be different. And then number seven, um, I love this part, it's your prayer plan. So if you flip it over, it says who you're praying for. You just write their name in there and then you just insert their name in there when you pray. Okay, so if I'm closing my tea huddle in prayer, We'll ask for each other's prayer requests, but we're really praying for the lost, people that don't know Christ. Okay, so um, that's how a tea huddle works. I just really encourage you um, to try one. Um, you know, for some of you, you might think, well, I don't know who to ask. Like, I don't want to bother this person, and they say no, or I don't want to bother this person. Just ask the Lord. Uh, we all need community, and this one's really community, like, when it gets smaller, the sharing goes deeper. So, um, you know, I want to close by sharing this one story. Okay. So there's this true story of Lieutenant Hiro Onada. He was the last Japanese soldier to surrender after World War II. He was left on an island in the Philippines in the 1944 with three other comrades. Over time, those three passed away. But this Lieutenant Hiro Onada he continued his private war alone. You know, they were given the commands before the Japan left, and they said, continue on the mission, even if Japan surrenders. So this lieutenant, he did that. He was in the jungles for almost 30 years alone. There were leaflets that were dropped in the jungle telling him, surrender. It's done. The war's over. But he didn't believe those leaflets. He thought that it was just, you know, a camouflage, not true. There's loudspeakers blaring over the island telling him, give yourself up, it's over. You know, but he didn't want to. He just did his own private battle in his own private war alone. Finally, almost 30 years later, he gets an order from his former superior officer to give up, and he finally does. When he goes home to Japan, he's 52 years old. And people asked him, what was it like being in the jungles for 29 years? He said there was nothing pleasant about being in the jungle alone. People spend long years fighting lonely, lonely battles because they want to go it alone. People spend years in addiction, secret sin, and weakness when they could end the battle if they would only let somebody in. We need each other. Whatever you do today, make a movement towards relationship. Whatever that means to you, you can ask the Lord. So um, I'll be out there today and next week will be the last times to sign up for small groups. We have five small groups that are still open to other people. We have a guy Zoom group with Don Hirata. He's here today from Washington, but he's going to do it on Zoom. And then we have Jody and Ruth, they, they are also on Zoom. And then we have three other groups that are meeting in person. Um, so come on out there. And then I was thinking too, like, 
if you want to join a tea huddle but you don't know who to do it with, I'm going to have a paper out there too and you could sign up and then I could try to pair you up. So let me close in a word of prayer. Um, Father, thank you so much for today and your goodness and your grace. And um, thank you, Lord, that you love community and you love Catalyst. And Lord, you just want a special place for each of us so we could be watched over and cared for and loved because really um, that love is coming from you. So thank you, Lord, for community and uh, we just give this service to you, and we pray all these things, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us for our online service. Hope you will join us in person sometime. It'll be great to see you and meet you. Don't forget to subscribe to our Catalyst YouTube channel so you don't miss out on anything. And be blessed this week. And as always, thank you, Jesus.